Hello, my name is Dawn Couture. Welcome to part two of the four-part podcast, Integrating Academic and Career Development to Maximize Return on College Education series. In this second part, the focus will be on career readiness skills to enhance the return on college education. Segment one focused on the current higher education environment, um, and implications for undergraduate academic and career development, and segments three and four will build upon what we cover here in segment two. Topics covered in this presentation include um, trying to answer the question, why does career readiness matter? How important is it that college graduates are career ready? How confident are current college students that they are prepared to be successful in the job market and the workplace? How confident are current college students that their major will lead to a good job? What are employers' top career readiness competency priorities? How well are college graduates meeting the expectations uh, that employers have of students' career readiness? Career readiness encapsulates the critical skills and knowledge students, college students, need in order to be prepared to enter the workforce upon graduation. Most all of those skills and knowledge are familiar and come out of either the general, generally come out of the core curriculum in the general education requirements of a college or a university um, and reinforced through uh, major core course requirements. The only uh, di difference is we will, as we will come to see, um, career management is a specifically articulated student learning outcome that are, is included among the eight career readiness competencies. Why does career readiness matter? Uh, well, first we need to know what does it mean to be career ready? before we can answer that question. Career ready means to succeed in today's workplace. Students must prepare for jobs that are rapidly changing, use technology and knowledge in areas that are still emerging, and work with colleagues from and often in all parts of the world. National leaders, policymakers, analysts, major ph philanthropies, students, the public at large, are all demanding that colleges and universities be held accountable for the value of a college education. They want and deserve to know what a college degree demands of the students who are pursuing it. Um, and what does it mean? What should students know and be able to do as a college graduate? Critical in um, that uh, formula is the requirement that we clearly identify, measure, and assess the critical knowledge and skills of our college graduates. Specific measurable learning outcomes must be defined before they can be measured and assessed. The answer to the question, why does career readiness matter, is employers, students, parents, and all other stakeholders expect college graduates to be ready to enter the workforce. They see that as the expected return on investment. C career readiness enhances the market value of the college and degree experience. The lack of career readiness erodes confidence in and the value of a college degree and experience. So continuing, why is career readiness so important? Students report it is the number one reason they choose to go to college. If that's true, and there's no reason to think that it isn't because that's what consistently been the case uh, since these surveys have been conducted, then maximizing academic and career development must be mission central, articulated in institution strategic plans, and supported with effective, efficient structure and resources. So it's the case that historically students and their families have identified getting a better job to be the number one reason students go to college. That number has increased, however, from 73% 
between 2000 and 2019 to 86% in 2010. The focus on careers has become more intense as a value measurement. How confident are current colored students that they are prepared to be successful in the job market and the workplace? Survey results provide disappointing answers. The 2017 Gallup poll of 32,000 students at 43 randomly selected four-year institution reveals that only one in three students believe they will graduate with the skills and knowledge to be successful in the job market, 34%, and in the workplace, 36%. We need to address that gap. How confident are college students that their major will lead to a good job? Again, disappointing uh, results. Barely 50% of students surveyed believe their major will lead to a good job. This highlights the importance of helping students make better informed decisions in declaring a major and understanding their personal, educational, and career goals. Switching focus now to employers and what they believe are the top career readiness competency priorities. The National Association of Colleges and Employers, NACE, uh, does a uh, survey periodically and the 2017 survey uh, clearly demonstrates that when asked to rate the most important career readiness skills, employers identified First, critical thinking, professionalism, oral communications, teamwork, and collaboration. More recently, an AACU survey underscores those consistent high-value career competencies. In the um, intellectual and practical skills category of this particular survey, other than quantitative reasoning, all the high priority career readiness skills previously identified uh, reappear. Oral communication, teamwork, written communication, critical thinking and analytical reasoning, complex problem solving, innovation and creativity, technology skills, and then quantitative reasoning um, falling somewhat behind. Now we'll look at how well are college graduates meeting employers' expectation of their career readiness competencies. One measurement of that um, is a 2018 AACU uh, survey of business executives and hiring managers. More than half of hiring managers reported that it was difficult to fill open positions at the company or organization. 56% of business executives reported it as difficult to fill open positions. When asked to drill down and examine the career readiness of entry for entry level positions with um, readiness for advancement or promotion, business executives reported that 50% have have all or almost all the skills and knowledge to succeed at the entry level. That's not great, but it's better than some of the figures we've looked at. Um, obviously, that also means that 43% believe um, that they are less than, uh, they have less than all or most of the skills. Hiring managers reported only 60% have all or almost all the skills and knowledge to succeed at the entry level. So more than 40% of hiring managers and business executives do not have a believe, do not believe all or most of all college graduates have the skills and knowledge for entry level success. 40%. When asked to evaluate those skills and knowledge in the context of advancement and promotional opportunities within their organization, the results were dramatically lower. Business executives reported only 34% of reach, recent college grad applicants demonstrated all or most all of the skills and knowledge to advance within the company. 
The level of confidence among hiring managers was even lower, with only one in four, 25%, expressing confidence in that recent hires uh, would have or do present all or most of the skills necessary to promote and advance within the company. When we look at the perspectives of business leaders versus chief academic officers of colleges and universities, there is a glaring disconnect. 96% of chief academic officers at colleges and universities report they believe that their institutions are very or somewhat effective at preparing students for the workforce, according to a 2014 uh, Gallup and Lumina Foundation report. That same report found only 11% of business leaders strongly agree with the rating given by chief academic officers. The disconnect between what employers say are important and how well prepared students believe they are for those meeting those competencies and what employers perceive the level of preparedness to be is, well, astounding. Um, Clearly, there is not one metric of measurement in which the student's perspective, which is the baby blue bar line, is within 10 percentage points of the employer's lower perspective. When it comes to the types of skills and knowledge that employers feel are most important to workplace success, large majorities of employers do not feel recent college graduates are well prepared. Working with others in teams, only 37% believe that recent college graduates are prepared. 37% staying current on technologies. One in three demonstrating confidence in ethical decision making and the levels of confidence that employers have in the remaining core career readiness skills drop off from there. Uh, written communication, barely one in four hiring managers and, and, and uh, business executives have confidence in the writing ability of recent college graduates. These are troubling but actionable uh, if we choose to pay attention and put our minds together on how best to address and improve student learning outcomes in career readiness measurements. We're going to turn our attention now to gaps between students' perception and employers' perception of students' career readiness skills. As demonstrated here, only 42% of employers in the 2015 survey um, that was conducted by Hart Associates for AACU reported that colleges and universities were doing a good job to ensure that their graduates possess the full set of skills and knowledge they need for success. In other words, are career ready. 74% of students believe that they were well prepared by their colleges and universities um, for career readiness. The percentage of employers who were felt that colleges and universities had prepared students uh, for career advancement and promotion uh, declined uh, to 36 percent, um, and uh, there was a uh, decline among students as well. But there's still a significant gap between the perception and perhaps the reality of um, students' readiness, um, career readiness for both entry level and promotional opportunities. Clearly, students and employers don't see it the same way. Um, a 2013 report um, indicated that 50% of students felt they were very or completely prepared for a position within their academic field. 50% of 
while only 39% of hiring managers surveyed in that particular instrument agreed. In 2013, only 11% in the Gallup Lumina poll of business leaders think that graduates were completely prepared for the workforce. Also interesting to note, the Hartford 2015 Millennial Leadership Survey um, focusing on millennials aged, those students and graduates aged 18 to 34, um, dug down a little deeper uh, to see what, um, what the level of interest was and what kind of training recent grads uh, thought they would need in order to get promotional opportunities. 60% of the students that responded said they wanted training in leadership skills. Just 28% cited a need for help with written and oral communications. That's the category which employers say they are most significantly lacking. So again, a disconnect, a misalignment uh, with perception and uh, among these two critical groups, employers and students. Going a little bit deeper, um, this chart, which is, I apologize, it's very busy, um, but it is an important chart because it shows the gap between how, high, how important employers rate a particular skill and how well prepared those employers believe recent college grads, and these are undergrads, are prepared. In the far uh, two right-hand columns, the gap between those two, how important versus how well prepared, um, is uh, the 2014 gap is the last column to the right, um, the, the most recent survey from 2018 is uh, the second to, to last. What is, again, um, visibly uh, very clear here is there is a mismatch, a disconnect between those qualities which employers rate as very important career readiness skills and the level of preparation um, that they believe students have. Um, that gap is more than 40% for the top tier career readiness skills, including critical thinking, analytical reasoning, the ability to apply knowledge and skills to real world problems, the ability to communicate effectively in writing, self and self motivation, as well as effective oral communication skills. So taking all of what we've looked at here together and then factoring in the pressure points, challenges confronting higher education that were outlined in the first presentation in this series, the question I have is, would it be fair to conclude there is a crisis in confidence in higher education? Crisis or not, I think we can agree that new insights, innovative practices, and powerful solutions are in high demand, especially in academic and career development. Thank you for watching. Should you uh, wish to continue, the next segment will look at best practices in integrating academic and career development. If you would like a copy of this presentation or have comments or questions, I invite you to reach me via email or my LinkedIn account. Thank you.